This episode is brought to you by Summer School Electronics. With pedals like the Snow Day Delay, the Pep Rally Fuzz, the Trash Panda, and my personal favorite, the Science Fair, which is two classic dirt pedals in one with a mid-boosted overdrive on one side, a black lab rat circuit on the other, and a blend knob to blend between them to find the perfect classic stacked dirt sound you're looking for, it's hard not to find something you'll love. Mark builds all of his pedals by hand in Syracuse, New York, where he also works as a full-time educator. In addition to the super fun graphics on their pedals, Mark also offers custom artwork. Want your dog's face on a pedal? He can do it. Want your face on a pedal? He can make that happen too. Go over to summerschoolelectronics.com and make sure to tell them that 40 Watt Podcast sent you. This episode is brought to you by the supporters of 40 Watt Podcast over on Patreon. Go over to patreon.com slash 40 Watt Podcast where for as little as $3 per month you can help support the podcast and get every episode ad free. For $5 a month, you'll get every episode ad-free as well as a bonus episode every week. I can't overstate how thankful I am for the support of my patrons and hope you'll consider joining the team and helping keep this show on the road. Forty Waters, welcome to another episode of Forty Watt Podcast. My name is Philip, and I am your host. I'm um, really pumped for this episode this week. I didn't say super excited, so no more memes about that. Um, so before we get kicked off here and we start uh, talking about all sorts of lunatic things around guitar pedals, because all guitar builders are or guitar pedal builders are lunatics. We've established this in our now going on year four of doing this show um before we get started i need to thank um sponsors of this podcast now you've already heard a few of them in the top of the show that are in the the pre-roll ads um but we have another one that i like to mention very specifically at the top and that's barry from grez guitars um barry is building incredible guitars if you're not aware of them you need to go check it out there are links down below in the description or in the show notes uh to find barry's website and get over there to instagram Barry builds these super rad guitars out of reclaimed hundreds year old redwood. Um, I have a couple. I have a, a Folsom, which is his uh, sort of Bigsby slash Telecaster build. And I also have, for those of you watching over my left shoulder here, I have this baritone Mendocino that I absolutely adore. And Barry also has just released, I couldn't talk about it in the last episode because I wasn't sure when he'd release it. He's just released a Bass 6 model. Uh, which sounds flipping awesome. I love the guitars he builds. Uh, I have another one I plan on getting him to build here really soon. We're going to be working on the project. So thank Barry for all the support he gives to this podcast. And y'all should go check it out. Buy some guitars from Barry. You know, three, four, five. It's great. You need them all. So moving on, this week's episode, I've got Dan from Spun Loud Effects. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well, Phil. I'm How doing great. Um, so we actually got to talking over on Discord is how we got to, to chatting. Um, listeners, if you don't know, there is a Discord for 40 Watt Podcast, which Dan is not in, but we can fix that later. Um, we met in another <laughs> server. Oh. I need to be in another yeah, Discord I, server look, for sure. Let me tell you, I've got my, the little the little <laughs> list over on the left has so many little round buttons. It doesn't help yeah. that I also have a bunch that I'm in from gaming days. So I've still got a bunch of my mm -hmm. gaming crew discords. And then a bunch of my college buddies discovered Discord and created Discord servers where we can catch up <laughs> there. And it's like, and now I'm in like 10 or 15 guitar related Discord. It's a lot. It's a lot. So if, if you listeners, if you don't want to jump into the 40 watt Discord because you've got Discord, you've got way too many servers. I totally understand. But there is one. It is free to join. Um, but yeah, we got to talking. I checked out your pedals. I think you're making some really cool stuff. I think you've got a really interesting story, how you got into this. It's, uh, it's interesting, not entirely uncommon, but it's always unique. I love how a story cannot be uncommon, but it's unique to everyone, like the motivations. Mm -hmm. So to kick us off into our conversation, Dan, let's tell all the listeners who you are. How'd you get into doing this? How'd you get into playing guitar? uh basically the the big overview okay yeah we can go way back uh so yeah i'm dan demay uh, i've spun a lot of effects uh this is this is the sixth year that uh spun a lot of effects has been a thing i started in 2018 
And it was, it is a pretty common, I feel like in the guitar pedal builder world story, um, I started, you know, tinkering around and really what it was is I got back in a band and I hadn't been in a band for a long time. And when I was younger and I was in bands in my twenties, I had my Fender Bassman 50 and I had a Jekyll and Hyde pedal. And that was, that was it. That was, and I toted that thing around everywhere I went with a, you know, a 412 cab, like an idiot. No, <laughs> do it. Right. Oh, we're playing the tiniest room. Yeah. I need a half stack. Come on, man. Bring back you know? the 412. And yeah. Right. Um, so I toted that thing around and that was kind of my, my setup. And when I got back into playing in a band, I, uh, I was like, you know, I should rethink like what my sound is and just like, what do I want to pursue? And so I reached out to a buddy of mine, um, shout out Dakota Cole, uh, who's a, who's a guitar tech and he's, uh, out with Hail, Hailstrom oh, wow. right now, um, somewhere in Europe. Um, but, uh, he was like t- running down some different drive pedals and stuff. And then he just said, or, you know, you could make your own. And I was like, well, that's a crazy idea. And, um, and I had some background. I grew up kind of working on boats, cars, motorcycles, what have you. My stepdad taught me some, his dad built a uh, ham radio. So he taught me a little bit, a little bit about the fundamentals of electronics, a very little bit, I assure you. Um, but I did know how to solder and I was like, well, I can probably figure this out. Um, so I started messing with some different circuits and uh, I built a couple of little basic drive pedals and then um, was, you know, messing with them, changing values, took them to rehearsal. And our drummer at the time, who was also a guitar player, um, was like, hey, you should put those both in one box. That'd be cool. And so for Christmas, I decided to make him that pedal. And so I put them in one box and they were on strip board, whatever. And then I was like, well, it needs to look cool, right? So it needs like a thing. So I came up with a name and I came up with, you know, I, I used to have a production company back in the day called Spun Loud Productions gotcha. where I did live shows and we had a sort of a record label briefly in there as well. So it was all kind of Spun Loud Records, Spun Loud Productions. So I was like, I'll do that. So I make this pedal, I give it to him for Christmas and he plugs in at our rehearsal space and it just rips. And he's like, I love this. And so immediately our bass player wanted one. <laughs> And then our other guitar player wanted one. And so I was like, well, I'll build, you know, 10 of these or something, whatever. And then it just kind of spiraled from there. And actually, this is not the actual original, but this was the first pedal, the Blister and Peel. Oh, yeah. And, so when I, uh, when I started this is pretty much what up, it looked like. Um, your pedals, trying to get a kind of feel for what you do and what you're building. And uh, that was one of the ones I saw. And uh, I, first of all, I yep. love that footprint i know a lot of people don't like that dual footprint uh size I, I, it's my favorite enclosure size that that side by side dual anyway mm-hmm. it looks really rad i have no idea what it does so what, what was in that circuit that you built originally so it's a pretty it's pretty straightforward it's uh so it's it's basically a dual fuzz drive but but technically it's got on the blister side, it's the uh, it's a variation of the Electra distortion, if people are familiar with that, which is a super simple circuit. Lots of people, DIYers, start with that circuit. I started with that circuit. Um, so there's a modified version of that in one side. And then the other side is another popular DIY circuit, the Bass Fuzz. Oh, yeah. Um, or Baz Fuss, as it's <laughs> often spelled. And, uh, so I just did, uh, you know, I was, had been playing with those. And so I, you know, tweaked them until I was happy with what I had and, um, added a tone control. And, uh, so that's kind of, you, you know, typical run them separate together, whatever, uh, get a little octave fuzz if you run them together and crank them, crank up the gain. I mean, it's, it definitely will, it will do the job if you want some yeah. gain. And I love octave fuzz. Um, I, and, and I've, I've always liked octave up fuzz, but I'm actually coming around to octave down fuzz too. Um, like, like I don't want like a full octave down, like it, you know, it actually sounds like a full extra note, but where it just kind of hints at it, right? And it just it yeah. gets almost synthy. It's it's like yeah, uh huh. I'd, I'd love that sound. Yeah, that that's super fun. I don't I don't like it when it's so clear that it i mean that's probably more found in digital effects yeah. right but like if it's too clear then it's like it sounds too like not yep. real 
but if it's kind of like it's hinting at it or it's just barely there then you it's like it sounds cool but it's like genuine and it's like yeah this still came from my guitar yeah. so, so so you you build these pedals for your friends um your bandmates and and still at this point i don't know if you were thinking hey i'm gonna make, try to make a go with this to make a business what no what not pushes, even a what's that next bit. step after that uh well it really was like i just i decided to build like mm-hmm. 10 of them right so i so i made these ones for my bandmates and they were very crude the initial ones i was doing like spray painting enclosures doing water slide decals um you know hand drilling everything myself out in my little shed uh, i started out in this i was in this little shed in my yeah. backyard in west seattle um, no heat in the winter time, so you know, rough, rough times yeah. out there. And also, drilling enclosures, but, uh, just period, is awful. I yeah, I hate <laughs> it. And even at the time, I was doing it freehand. Uh, I mean, I got a, a drill yeah. press from a buddy later, and I've you know, and drill presses are great and whatever. But like, still, it's just it's just not it's not fun for me to do. I don't enjoy doing that. I don't enjoy spray painting enclosures. I don't. Yeah, you know that's not really my jam. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, so I decided I needed to like step it up. So I ordered, uh, I ordered whatever the smallest batch, I think it was 10 enclosures from then yeah. mammoth was still around mammoth electronics. And so, you know, powder coated UV printed, uh, drilled. So i took all that work off of my, uh, off of my bench and, uh, and I built those and I, I just started posting about it on Instagram and through word of mouth and through posts, like people started wanting, asking for them and, and buying them. And so at that point I was like, I should probably set up a website and I have these other ideas at that point. I was like, well, I want to build this and, and I want to build this and you know, this would be cool. And so I just was like, I'll set up a website and, um, and I'll start working on other stuff. And initially I was like, Oh, I'll just, I'll do like a, a blister drive and I'll do a peel drive separate. Cause that'll be kind of cool, which never happened. There's one blister drive in existence and one of my good friends has it. Um, but, I, but it just sort of like that kind of, you know, it kind of got going and, um, and then I the, really like the, the first major step from there was to take the original blister and peel and update it. And I moved it over to the Gorva uh, S90 enclosures and was having um, Jordan from Pine Box do my enclosures, and uh, he helped me out with my first PCB layout. Um, so I was able to get it onto a PCB and kind of streamline that build process. And uh, and then, I mean, that's when I started like really like promoting it, and you know, doing PR, my own PR and and getting some interviews and you know, sending them out to people and that kind of thing. I, so, I feel like that's the um, tipping point from. For any like aspiring pedal builder, the moment you start make designing your own PCBs and having them made for you, like that's when you've really got the bug. Like that's okay. This isn't just buying mm-hmm. strip board and figuring out how can I put this together and make this work as a pedal. This is when you're like, I'm serious because I'm paying another company to print and create these PCBs. I don't know if you're actually doing that at the point, but still the designing aspect because you can make you can make your own PCBs if you want, if you're real lunatic. Oh my, it's so time and fin- intensive that to do awful. that. Um, and yeah, and t- to be clear, that so the so that first one I had Jordan do the layout for me, and it was great, and I was like, this is awesome, and then. The next pedal that I released, which was the Litigator, um, I my friend John Esterly of Rare mm-hmm. Buzz Effects, who's a great guy, great company, um, he helped me really master Eagle, uh, and so which is the uh, for those who aren't uh, that nerdy, that's the piece one of the PCB design softwares out yeah. there. Um, and uh, once I did that, yeah, I mean that just unlocked the box because it's like, well, now I j- I can just go in here and I can just make whatever I want. I mean not whatever I want, but you know, whatever I can dream up that'll work, you know? And, um, and it also kind of got me off of, uh, breadboarding very much. I, I kind of hate breadboarding. I know that's, that's a, some people are on either yeah. side of that in the builder community. And I just like, I can't stand it. Cause I always feel like I get one bad connection and then I don't know if it's like my design is flawed or there's like a one loose thing in the breadboard right. somewhere and it's like you move it and it works and it doesn't work. And I just want to be like, to hell with this. I'm just going to, 
I'm going to lay it out and Eagle and order some PCBs. And if it doesn't work, I'll order more, you know, <laughs> I, um, I, I got into breadboarding recently. Um, not like, not like designing my own thing, not anything like that, but I wanted to understand the concept of breadboarding. Um, still pretty sure I'll never be a pedal builder. <laughs> Just, just putting it out there that <laughs> hey, don't I, count I don't yourself think that's out. That's the route for me, but I, I wanted to understand it more. Really, is it's, it comes down to just pure curiosity. I wanted to understand better the process, mm -hmm. and um, I've had Alex from Copper Sound, uh, Cop yeah, Copper oh, Sound yeah. on, and they do those yep. ready-made PCBs. I, I'm sorry, breadboards that have like the jacks and mm -hmm. the switch yeah, already those on. Are awesome. So, um, I or I ordered one of those and he was gracious enough to send along one of their their kits along with it like he just picked one for me and oh, so cool. um I did that I've actually got it still sitting over here on a shelf but um it's it's breadboarding is fascinating but I definitely messed up even with well written instructions and had to back up and like <laughs> okay where did I, where did I mess this up and not you know cuz I was getting no sound none and I was like I had uh -huh. so I had to find it and it was, and it was obviously just user error, me not knowing how certain things needed to connect and trying to read it, but it eventually did work. I did get some satisfaction out of it. And then I knew even more so that people that enjoy doing this, I'm looking at you, Brian Wampler, um, are complete and <laughs> oh utter God, lunatics. Wampler, yes. Yeah. Right. I, uh, I have watched a lot of his videos and I've tried to replicate things that he's like, yeah, just do this. And I'm like, my breadboard doesn't let me do that. It doesn't work. So I don't know what to tell you, Brian. Like, um, maybe he needs to come over to my house and teach me how to use a breadboard. I, maybe I have cheap breadboards. Maybe that's part of my problem. He's one of those guys know, that makes but... it sound so simple. And then you're like, this is not that oh, simple. He just, he's like, yeah, we'll just make an op amp distortion. It'll be awesome. And I'm like, yeah, it's not that it's not. It's not as easy as you make it sound. It's just it's just sitting right uh, there in his head. Like he's just like yeah. Like he, he can just pull out a bunch of components and put something together. I I don't know. His brain doesn't work like ours, and I think that's better for for everyone involved. Um. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's the thing for me that like I get a lot of imposter syndrome because I'm not an engineer. Right. Like I was, I didn't, I didn't, I don't have any kind of EE background other than like like learning to do things over the years. I was a mechanic for a while. I worked in automotive, electrical. I worked in an electric motor shop. I used to wind big electric motors. So like I have these like foundations of knowledge, but, um, but I'm not like, I can't math a yeah. pedal. Like there are guys who, you know, they just, they math the pedal and they know what it's going to do. And I'm like, that's cool. You're like Mozarting yeah. the pedal. I am like, I know that if I put these components together, it'll, generally do this and then put them together and then start, you know, swapping things until I get the sound that I like. That's, you know, it's very like, uh, organic and kind of, uh, you know, trial and error, just like dialing it in for flavor, you know, salt to yeah, taste. Absolutely. And it's, it's funny because I have, I've had a bunch of pedal, pedal boarders on this podcast at this point. And, uh, one of those things is that I, I wish I could remember. I wish I had the memory to tell you who told me this story, or even if it was on the podcast, it may not have been. But um, <laughs> talked about they were taking uh, an electrical engineering class. Uh, they were actually studying it. And in my head, I want to say that it was Tim over at Bardic Audio that told me the story, but don't quote me on that. Um, and took in a guitar pedal schematic. Like, to his uh -huh. as a project he wanted to do in this this college level electrical engineering class and apparently his professor looked at it and said oh man this is trash no I, none of this makes any sense this can't no one would ever want that and it was like one of the best i think it was like a fuzz face like you know what i mean it's it's something extremely right. popular everyone loves he's like why would anyone do this it's like because it sounds good we we like the way it sounds well, I mean, so much of what we're doing with guitar pedals is breaking That's the it. signal. You know, we're not we're not actually like trying to refine it into this, you know, ultra high end hi fi signal like you know, your your chat with uh Charles right. from Silk Tone. Yep. Charles, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, you know, he used to build hi fi equipment and like we're not trying to do that. We're actually trying to yeah. break it and you know, and, and modify it in ways that, that an engineer would say are wrong. So there you yeah. go. I, it, and and don't get me wrong, I I have listeners. Uh, they know who they are. Who are engineers? 
who are like, no, it makes sense. It can work this way. No, you, your brain works that way. And the, you know, the rest of the engineering world <laughs> says this is wrong. But it's it's beautiful because that was yeah. that was Fender when he was designing Fender amps. He was just trying to make bigger, louder, cleaner amps. He wanted clean, mm -hmm. clean, clean. And instead, everybody was just like, "Oh, oh, we only had like fifteen watt amps before. Now we've got a fifty watt amp. We can crank it into distortion even louder." And he's like, "No, no, that that wasn't <laughs> the point." So uh -huh. before you know it, we end up with things like the Marshall Major 200 watt amplifiers, and they still crank them to the point of destroying people. Not they're destroying their hearing, yeah. literally ripping people apart with the sound. Nobody needs that. I, you know, <laughs> I've, I've seen a Marshall Major. I've never played one. I'm terrified of those. So you you get to build and pedals you you're now you've got you got a lineup um i think there's right now there's only three in the current lineup right is that correct uh i mean if really there's yeah. two uh because i did a collaboration with john uh with mm. rare buzz the phasar which this has some other knobs on it because i must have taken them <laughs> off or something but anyway uh so this is a fuzz and phaser that we did together um super fun um Love working with John. John's one of my, he's one of my really good friends. We chat yeah. all the time. So uh, always a pleasure, but uh, it just, uh, you know, frankly, it just wasn't a big hit. Like some, the people who wanted that, they love it, but it, it's, I think it's one of those niche things where like, uh, you know, everyone has a fuzz, everyone has a, a, you know, some kind of overdrive distortion, whatever. Most people probably have a delay but you start getting into like fuzz and phase combos. And I just feel like that's like a, that's more of a niche yeah. audience. It gets a little, little hard um, to sell. So the, the, I've got a couple of, I have two now uh, trims that are trim and overdrive or trim. And I don't, I don't know what to call the other one, distortion or fuzz. It's somewhere in there in that category. Uh huh. And it's so cool, but I can definitely see how it's a hard pedal for some people to really maybe not even just wrap their brain around, but to find a place for it in their rig and in their sound. But I, I mm -hmm. love the idea of mixing fuzz and modulation and. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I whether or not it's uh commercially successful, I've got another, you know, blend mix pedal in oh, the works nice. down the road. So, um, so I'm going to do it again cause I want it. And, you know, I, Frankly, my approach to designing pedals is to build the things I want to play. Um, I, I haven't really had anyone say, you should build this, and then I built that. It's more like, you know, thanks for the suggestion. I want to build this right now, so that's what I'm going to do. And that's kind of how, how, I've, how I've approached it. And so far, uh, you know, with certainly the designs that I've, uh, that I've released and gotten out there in any amount of production... Uh, people have been really happy with them. I've had really warm, positive rec uh, receptions. And so I guess, you know, I, I must have some decent ideas yeah. occasionally. So, <laughs> so, and I think that's important. Build uh, what you enjoy because you're going to make it sound the way you want. And if other people are into that, inevitably people, other people are into the sound you're into. That's the thing. Yeah. No matter what yeah. your sound is, other people are going to be into it. So you said you got back. So, yeah, oh. I got... I got, I got a couple. Yeah, I was just you asked me. Yeah, yeah. What oh I yeah, had, that's right. Let's back up. What I had now, so I'll 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 finish that. So I've got so the shucks and fuzz is like just coming back. I kind of let it run out for a while, and this is a nice high gain fuzz that um, I wanted to get. I'm really uh, a lover of the uh, of like Neil Young's like crazy horse like just cranked tweed yeah. sound. And uh, I, I can't say that I emulated that exactly in this, or some people might even say accurately, but I wanted that kind of a sound. And so um, so that's what I did with the Shuxon. And it was so gainy that I initially had to add this input knob because I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't tame it enough. And I, oh. I'm a firm believer that you should be able to roll the gain off, maybe not all yeah. the way, but roll a lot of it off so you can have a cleaned up sound. And uh, so I added this input knob and then it, it turned into this whole other thing because you can kind of get a couple different flavors that way with like one is a gain control for one stage and then the input knob. So you crank one, kill the other, 
you get kind of one flavor, you go the other way, you get a different flavor. So it's kind of a, ended up being a happy surprise. So. And that's um, an interesting, you don't see a lot of input knobs on uh, guitar pedals. You see, you see it a little more when you get out outside of the guitar world and, you know, effects for synth and for effects for, for other, other things where you can control the amount that's going into something. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I, once again, we go back to that Fender thing. We were just trying to, he was just breaking Fender amps essentially by just crazy and how loud they can go. And I, I don't know. I love that kind of fuzz a lot. Um, it can be untamed. I had, I've had a, a Tweed Deluxe, not, not an actual Tweed Deluxe, it's a Victoria version of the Tweed Deluxe. So I actually can't tell you if it does it the same way, but there is something to just turning all three knobs up to, up to 10 or to those go to 12. I yeah. don't remember. Uh, and just, and just goes to goes, 11. It's somewhere around 11. Um, but, uh, <laughs> It's it. There's there's just so much beauty in that sound. But if it's untamable, you got to do something to bring it down a little bit. And I, I really like that idea with the the input knob. This podcast is supported in part by String Joy Strings. I'm a snob. At least that's what people tell me. I'm never okay with good enough, and that's where String Joy Strings come in. They're better than good enough. They're the best. String Joy are making some of the finest strings available today, right up the road from me in Nashville, Tennessee. They offer custom sets, balanced tension, coated strings, the works. If you need it, they can probably make it happen. You should be using Stringjoy Strings, and if you're going to order from them, you really could help this podcast out by clicking the affiliate link down in the description or show notes below. You get amazing strings, I get a little bit of that back to help the show keep going. It's a win-win situation. Get your Stringjoy Strings today. So, I mean, it's it's kind of stupid simple because really... What I I was rolling my guitar volume knob mm -hmm. off, and I was like, "Well, I don't like to do that a lot. I'm I'm kind of I'm just not that level of a dynamics yeah. player." But I'm like, if I put it on the box, then you can do it. You can set it and forget it, you know. And it's like, if you want a little, you want to bring it down a little bit, leave it there. You never have to mess with your guitar, and you know. And for players who want to mess with their volume, then that gives you just another layer to, to play around with. And yeah, run whatever you want through it. Run something else through it that you don't have that yeah. option on. It makes so. me wonder if anyone's ever, see, you're giving me ideas now. It makes me wonder if anyone's ever done a um, fuzz face style circuit. Oh, see, now my brain's running rampant. You could do a fuzz face style circuit. Because, you know, everybody talks about the clean sound of the fuzz face, right? The roll, roll your volume back and you can get that, that Hendrix uh -huh. clean sound. Well, that's great um, if you play with your volume knob a lot. Um, I, I'm i always jealous of players that can do the, the swells with their pinky finger, uh, and they can just mm -hmm. do the volume mm -hmm. swells, and, and they sound amazing. Um, I, have, I have some nerve damage in my right hand from a piece of glass that cut a bunch of nerves and stuff, and so I can't do those rolls, at least not smoothly. It, it sounds awful. And so... If I can set it on the pedal where I never have to roll the volume back, <coughs> that would be great. But then I'd also probably want like a second switch that disengages that so that it can just be full bore mm -hmm. into it mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you're yeah. giving me I, ideas. I think, you know, of there V2. You V2 with just a second switch that all it does is disengage the input and lets it go completely full bore. Yeah. And just bypasses it yep. wide open. Yeah. There you go. And there's your, there's your, your rhythm yep. and your analog tone. presets. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So your other pedal. Yeah. Yeah. So then the other one, and this is funny cause I don't even have one that's in the actual stock color, <laughs> but the litigator, um, I've, I've done this in so many different colors. It's, uh, I can't even keep track anymore, but, <clears throat> um, so the litigator was really like the, it was my first, um, all original design. It came after the, so I did the blister and peel version too. And then I did this flanger that was super limited for, um, for, uh, Chris rest in lag oh, wagon. Yeah. Um, uh, he, uh, he wanted a, a flanger to take on the road. Uh, and so I made, I found a circuit, uh, that electric druid had already sort of hammered out. Uh, and so I took that and did a nice, cool enclosure design and it was like matched the colors of their new record and stuff. And, uh, so I was able to do that for him. And then a couple of people were asking about it. So I built like 10 of those, but, um, and it was cool. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't my own design circuit wise, sure. but, um, but it was super fun to do and, and cool to look at. Well, 
and uh no i was oh, gonna go say it's you know that whole not <clears throat> super you know unique or original design there's not a ton out there you know there's only only so many ways to break a signal so. yeah no you're absolutely right and and that's like i i sort of repeat that mantra yeah. all the time when people are like oh well you know what kind of new ideas do you have? And I'm like, there aren't a lot of new ideas out there in this world. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are still coming up with them. And really that's probably more in the digital landscape yeah. now, but. Um, At least that's what it feels like. Yeah, It feels you know, like it's the digital world is where they're really doing all sorts of crazy wild stuff because they can. But when you talk analog, you know, <clears throat> clipping, there's only so many ways to do it. Yeah. Um, but but then you know in in the world of analog effects where the way you have to differentiate yourself or the way people do like things like your input knob on the pedal that's unique that part is unique even if the mm -hmm. concept's not entirely unique you just moved your guitar's volume onto the pedal so that you can set it there instead of worrying about it on the guitar still nobody's doing it. Oh, well, somebody uh, inevitably I'll get a comment that says, Oh, well the, these three, four or five, these pedals, y'all, yeah, there's right, 1800 right. guitar pedal builders out there. <laughs> Somebody's done it. I get it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, I did the flanger and that, um, and in the back of my mind for a while, I, there was this one sound I had gotten out of the blister and peel and, uh, I, um, it reminded me of the guitar tone, and this is kind of cliche in guitar pedal world, but it reminded me of the blues break, Clapton's blues break oh, yeah. tone. And it was particularly to uh, the Stormy Monday that he recorded with the blues breakers. And there's like where the guitar kind of fades in, and he's just kind of noodling, and it builds up. And I love that sound. Like, I've just always loved that sound. I'm not like a huge Clapton yeah. fan or anything, but I just love that tone. And I had gotten hints of it on the blister and peel in certain settings. And I was like, well, I want to try to make that did not in any way try to build a blues right. breaker. I like just, and honestly, I didn't even think about approaching it from that. I was just like, I'm going to do a discrete transistor based overdrive. That's going to do that. And so over quite a while, I was kind of messing with it. And in uh, like 2020, I started really like, I got to somewhere where I was like, okay, this is, this is almost there. And uh, so then, yeah, then I started, that's when I started learning to lay out uh, PCBs. And, um, and eventually after a lot of back and forth and sending pedals to different people, um, the lit litigator was born. Yeah. And um, a friend of mine came up with the name because, you know, the, the, uh, the whole blues lawyer Oh, meme. I love it. I, I was going to uh, ask He was that. like, you should call it. He was like, you should call it the litigator. Because I was like, well, it's this blues drive kind of thing. He's like litigator. So um, so I was like, yeah, that's great. I love it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then had another friend who's an artist do the do the art, the little lady justice yeah. there. She looks very angry, too. Yeah. I like that she's not very passively ju uh, judging. She's very angrily judging. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was, um, yeah. And I, I still, to this day, this is my favorite pedal that I've made. It's my favorite pedal on my board. I love it. Um, I've done like some different variations. This one has like some different transistors and a little bit, uh, it's got like a uh, high lowered headroom. So it distorts a little earlier, a little more. I did like, did it as like a high gain version. It's not, maybe not a hundred percent accurate to say it's sure. high gain, but higher gain. There's a little bit of higher gain, lower headroom, more volume. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, it's been, it was received really well, uh, had a fantastic, I think I sent you, I'm so proud of the premier guitar yeah. review. Cause it was just like, they, they couldn't gush enough about how good it was. And I was like, yep. cool. I did that. It's, it's super. I'm, I'm, so I'm curious, you, you start this company 2018 ish. We'll, we'll call it ish some more yeah. time. And you're playing more gigs in and you start building some pedals and then 2020 comes along and does what 2020 did. Um, I know that you say that's when you started building your own PCBs. Is that just, was that part of, Hey, you had time because we weren't going anywhere. Like, okay, I'm going to really get this designing PCBs down or. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, yeah, I was, I shifted to working from home. <clears throat> so I definitely had more time, uh, to, you know, just at home, right? I wasn't commuting. 
Um, so I had the time to kind of mess around with that. And, um, yeah. And of course you're not like it's, it was, you know, the pandemic, so we're not going out to dinner. We're not going out, you know, you're just not going yeah. out. So, um, and my partner also works from home. So, um, it just was like, yeah, I had some time and, uh, I was like into it. And of course, um, you know, gigs were over, but also my, my band had kind of evaporated or kind of a weird thing, but the drummer ghosted the whole band oh. and, you know, oh, well then. It, and then it just kind of, you know, it just toppled as bands often yeah, do, right? Man, that's the hard part. Like bands are rough. <laughs> Being in a band is yeah. hard and it gets harder as you get older. <laughs> yeah. It's so much harder. Yeah. Yeah. Finding sure. other people that you want to spend that much time with. I'm sorry. My, my misanthropy has come at miss. I, I think I mispronounced that word, but that's okay. Um, uh, I am a misanthrope. Me and just general people don't get along, despite the fact that I'm an extrovert who needs to be around other people to like energize. It's a <laughs> terrible way to live. But um, uh, yeah, it's like as you get older, like and your circle shrinks. It gets so much harder to like find people that you want to do this thing with. And then you know you hear the stories of people just ghosting. Uh, way more bands have broken up than bands that have made it. That's what I remind people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That one was, that was bizarre, but you know, it's, uh, it, it happens. And, uh, yeah. So just, yeah. Spent a lot of time learning how to lay out PCBs. And, um, I was, I started, uh, screen printing <clears throat> for a little while. I was screen printing all my enclosures. Um, and I still do some litigators, mm -hmm. like I'll do some different custom colors, um, but I'm not like, not super into needing to do that all the time. Um, if I, I may end up doing like a, if I do another pedal that's going to be in the, in the rotation for a while, I may do a screen with like the shucks and, and that on it. So I can just have a screen and then I can do one offs and stuff. Cause it's fun to be able to just be like, oh, I'm just going to do two right. in this color or something, you know, and, and not have to add it like pay the extra cost of shipping and all that. And, stuff, and sometimes so. something happens, you know, I I'm thinking back to, um, all of the, uh, the pedal builders that express their support for like Ukraine in, when the beginning mm -hmm. of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, um, there were so many people who suddenly had a pedal in Ukrainian colors or the Ukrainian flag. And it's like those kind of things you want to be able to do, like not necessarily you want to do that exactly, but you know, something comes up, you're like, Hey, I want to recognize this moment or do this fun thing. That's inspired by this. I don't want to order 10, 15, 20 enclosures in this. I just want one or maybe two. Right. Yeah. My buddy, John, uh, rare buzz, you know, he wanted to do a Ukraine pedal and he did his, um, snitch in a, a different dress and he thought he was just going to do a few and he got so many orders. He ended up doing like, I don't know, like 120 wow. or something like he, I think the first round, he definitely donated over 10 grand. It was, that's bizarre. amazing. It was, he was like messaging me. He's like, I might have to fly you out to build these <laughs> things. Cause I can't get them done. That's amazing. So I, I loved, I loved seeing that. I mean, it was, it was a terrible reason to need that kind of support, but I loved seeing the amount of support that got thrown uh, around the, the the music industry during that time, it was really really heartwarming to see. Um, you know, I, I love the way this this industry and this community rallies around causes just in general, uh, each other and other causes that are that are worth. Uh, I love like for example, one of my favorites is that uh, Doug over at uh, Cower Guitars does does his where he'll do a giveaway where you know you donate money to World. Oh, I'm gonna get this wrong. World Kitchen, World Something Kitchen. No, I think World, is world kitchen, kitchen is that's that's yeah. one. Yeah. He did basically. If you donate to them, you get in a raffle. To sometimes he gives away a guitar. Sometimes he gives away like a half priced build or something like that. And it's really oh, rad. It's awesome. I've entered yeah. every time and I've yet to be drawn. So, <laughs> Doug. Yeah, I've participated in a bunch of raffles to um, and smaller fundraisers to just like help people out in the industry who you know, got in a car wreck or had some health issues or whatever. And, um, it's, it is, it's super cool. I, I, that's one of the things that I've loved about getting into this is just coming into this community of, of really cool people. I mean, for, 
you know, I've worked in a lot of industries and I've met a lot of people in a lot of different sectors of the world. And I feel like there's overwhelmingly that people are just really good people who care about each other and want to do the right thing. And, um, you know, that, I mean, the pedal builder community has been so awesome. Um, so many people have helped me out and, uh, have become, you know, friends of, of varying degrees, some really good, some, I don't know that sure. well, but, you know, give it time. Um, but just people are so free with, with help and, and assistance and, and feedback and ideas. And um, I, I just feel like so many uh, industries are so competitive that you would be like, well, I'm not going to share my, you know, schematic with you, or I'm not going to tell you what you should do to do that better. Like, and this is not that way at all. People are like, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. You should, you know, do this and it'll you know, you'll fix that problem you're having or whatever. Yeah. So. It's it's so incredibly supportive. And to see the amount of, uh, I, I, I don't even know the right words to, to describe it. It's, but there, there's not a lot of ego in this, this industry. It is, there's, there's some ego, but, um, there's, there's, um, not a lot of people who hold things close to their chest and don't share and don't let, you know, cause you can, I've asked questions. Like I remember I was working on something, a design for something. Um, again, not don't want to be a pedal builder, but I felt like somebody needed it. And so I was going to try <laughs> to figure it out and then give it to someone else to do kind of thing. Uh, uh -huh. spoiler alert. I found out it's already, it already exists and it didn't need to be made. Um, but I had trouble finding it. So, um, but like I messaged Rick Matthews, right. Cause it needed, it needed some uh -huh. digital controls and, it's the only way it was going to work and basically needed digital memory of some control positions. And Rick, who has never had never met me at the time, uh, I got introduced to him through Blake Weiland. Blake uh, messaged Rick and, and facilitated an introduction. Rick spent like two hours in Facebook Messenger walking me through. OK, well, first, you need to learn how to do this because that'll be the first step. And then, like he laid it out like a it was almost like a syllabus when he was done. <laughs> like this dude he never met that's but awesome yeah, ultimately i didn't build it but i know that if i'd wanted to i have a roadmap uh, that i can go uh -huh. back to in in messengers and and that's a guy who has a podcast and has never built a pedal in his entire life like just messaging a guy out of the blue and saying hey i want to do this how do i do it he's like here here's all the information <laughs> yeah that's awesome and that that's that's the experience that I feel like I've had over and over with everybody. I mean, <clears throat> you know, uh, John donated a lot of his time uh, to helping me and, and we, we didn't know each other that well at that point. I mean, we had talked a little bit and I just started messaging him about it. And he was just like, I mean, he really held my hand on a lot of things that I, I couldn't figure out. And, um, and then other, you know, other people too, you know, and I'm like, I need to ask someone other than John <laughs> to help me because he's going to stop returning my calls. <laughs> so, so but, right now uh, you're not yeah. building pedals as your full-time gig. Uh, we talked about this little, no, I'm recording. not. It's not a, it's not a full-time job for you. Yet. Um, is, is that sort of like where you want to stay? Do you want it to become a full-time thing? Cause I, I've talked to people in both camps where they're like, no, I want to, I want to build and design guitar pedals full-time. And then some are like, no, I just want to do this as a side hustle. It's fun. I, I make a little bit of extra money doing it. I like doing it, but I'm going to keep my like main job, career, whatever it is I do over here. Yeah, I mean, I really, at least in the foreseeable future, it, side thing, side hustle is pretty much where it's going to stay. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I just, to me, it's like, I don't want to turn it into my work because I enjoy it and it's fun. And I, I'm very like, I keep it very arm's length when I need to. I mean, like this last summer, um, I, I sold pedals and when I, you know, I built some pedals and stuff, but I wasn't really working on new designs. I kind of was like, you know what, I want to go outside. I want to have my free time. And I did that. And I, and I just kind of stepped back and, you know, my sales, uh, in the fall, started to suffer because I wasn't doing it, you know, spending enough time like pumping my stuff, you know, and, and telling people, Hey, I'm out of here. I still got right. pedals. Um, but I, like, I just, it's fun to do and it's fun to, it's I, like, I love it when I get the opportunity to talk to somebody like you or, or, you know, or another podcast or, 
or share my stuff with somebody. Um, I, I enjoy that and I enjoy talking about pedals and checking out different pedals and stuff. But um, yeah, it just doesn't make sense for me to, to do it full time. I mean, if some point down the road, something blew up crazily, yeah. um, you know, I could revisit that idea. But uh, for now, I think it's it's just, you know, keep it cruising at my pace. I think that's good for mental health, too. Like you're not it's like if something happens, it's not like you're not building. It's not like you're not coming up. We just talked about you have another design you're working on already that's going to be uh, – I'm not going to let I got you three. Got, I got three. We can talk about them. Before oh, we finish, well, because so. I, because I'm always hesitant. I'm like, Oh, do you want to talk about what you might have coming up? Cause you never know if people are like, no, I don't want to talk about it yet. You know, cause some people are superstitious about it. They're like, no, if I talk about it, it's never going to happen. It's going to crash. And, <laughs> and then some people are like, no, I need to talk about it because there's my accountability to make sure that I follow through on doing this. Um, okay. So, I talked about the litigator for two Did years you really? and I mean, I think people were starting to think I was full <laughs> of shit because I was like, no, I'm going to build this pedal. And they're like, sure you are, Dan. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have a few things in my life that I have definitely talked about doing, uh, for about three or four years and I still haven't done it and I need to just do it. Um, so what else you got coming up then to add to the lineup? Yeah. So I have, so I, I mentioned like, and this is definitely in the very much in the early stages, but I am going to do some kind of a fuzz and delay. Mm. Um, um, my, what I really like, and I know it's been done, so I'm not, I'm not reinventing the wheel, but I really like, uh, like de- a lot of decay on a, a delay with lots of decay. Yeah. So like, I don't want it to clean up. I want it to just get worse and worse <laughs> and worse. And so, Pairing that with a fuzz to me just makes sense because I automatically on my board, if you give me a delay that has that long decay, I'm going to stick a fuzz into it. I'm going to get that that fuzzy delay sound. So that's something I want to build. Um, you know, it's probably going to be uh, based around PT2399, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, frankly, is just an easier way to do it. Um, I You know, I've looked at doing some bbd designs and um and it can be done those chips are really hard to get and they're expensive and uh they're expensive and i mean not that the 2399s are free but but you can get them like i can get one right now and i don't have to worry if it's real or if it's fake um so that's kind of the motivation there and and uh and that's going to be i don't know what the fuzz is going to be like honestly um i've got a couple of different options kicking around in my head um but I may take it in a different direction and, uh, you know, it might be, it might be more of an op amp based. Oh, bus, interesting. Um, which I haven't done yeah. yet, but, um, but I just to, you know, get a different change, the flavor change, change the avenue I'm going down. So I have no idea what the timeline for that is, but, uh, ostensibly I will work on a design this year, uh, at least, you know, schematic prototype prototyping. Yeah. And, um, and we'll I, see. I have become such a massive fuzz fan over the last few years. Um, and I've talked about this on the podcast. Like, you know, in, in the my busy gigging days when that was the main thing I did was was gig. Uh, and even after I, I left it as my full-time job, you know, I was still gigging, you know, 40, 50 a, a year minimum while also working. Um, I wish I were still doing that because my mental health would be better because there's no better time to just forget all your other worries than when you're playing music to me. Um, Now that 30 minutes before going on stage to play music, that's some of the worst mental health time ever. Um, But I, I, I didn't use fuzz. I had to learn fuzz and I got into fuzz faces and then I was like, Oh, this is fun. Then I discovered tone benders and I was like, Oh, Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, this is what guitar is supposed to sound like. Um, it's mainly because I'm a humbucker player. If, if I were more of a single coil yeah. player, the, the <laughs> fuzz face would make a lot more sense. Um, but it just, it gets really, really wooly, really, really wolfy kind of. And so the tone mm-hmm. bender yeah. up, didn't clean up, but it does, it tightens a lot of that up with humbuckers. And I just really love it. And when you talk about delays that, that just get, nasty the longer the delay happens i'm a tape delay junkie and so that's Mm -hmm. what i like yeah i want a delay that just starts to break down and decay and and just 
don't give me pristine by the by the second or third repeat i want it to sound like a telephone and 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 you uh -huh. millennial or you young millennials i'm an elder millennial here i'm not talking about your cell phone i'm talking about the black <laughs> handheld with the rotary control that your grandma used to have in her kitchen i want it to sound like that uh -huh. phone. yeah that bad connection yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, it sounds so good. I, I'm I'm playing in this show choir band right now. Um, actually, uh, as we're recording this, as as this episode goes out, I will be on the road headed to Nashville because the show choir I'm playing for is competing at the national show choir finals. And um, oh, oh yeah, awesome. it's fun. But you know, I get I get all these parts that are written out for guitar, and then I have to go through and like interpret. It's like oh, this guy's a this guy who wrote this as a choral conductor and composer. Like he doesn't know how to play guitar. So his, he doesn't know what these should be. So I'm like adding delay in places where there's absolutely no need for the delay, but there's just one part in particular where there's a, we're, we're playing, there's a build and then there's a full stop and there's nothing uh -huh. there for four beats. And so I've dialed Oof. in this really gritty tape delay so that when we do the full stop, there's nothing but just like the gritty delay decaying right behind it. And it's, it's the that. most beautiful sound ever. That's aw that's awesome. And that's a perfect use for something yeah. like that. It just just a little yeah, bit just... of a hint of an echo. It's almost ghostly, like right behind it. Like it's not really there, mm -hmm. but it's there. Yeah. 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 That that's a that's that's a perfect application. And yeah, I wanna I want something that uh people can do that with. Awesome. So so what um, else you got? So you said you had three currently kind of brewing up there. Yeah. And so I've got one uh, that I can't give too much detail about. It's a collaboration um, with a, another, uh, some local people here in oh, Bellingham. Cool. Um, and uh, it's, it's going to be a fuzz as well. Um, it's just, it's a fun uh, kind of, loud not like a gain, high gain but more like a mid gain fuzz um definitely give you some give you some octave but not like not like the shucks and fuzz where it's like really gonna you know blast your head off it's a little more middle of the road fuzz um super fun i'm really excited about it. it's i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to announce it uh maybe in may uh oh wow it, the plan is for it to come out this summer um and there'll be, it'll probably be pretty limited edition, but there will be like multiple okay. runs uh, in with, with some variation. So that'll be super cool. The art is so good and it's not my art. Uh, the collaborator had this amazing art. So it's, it kind of makes it, I mean, it, it's just, it's super rad and it, you just can't go wrong. And that's in a, a big enclosure. It's in a, a BB two. So, oh, yeah. so you're, so, you know, like the blister and peel, but the deeper, um, so I'm pretty pumped for that. Um, that's going to be really cool. And, and it's just like, it's something I've wanted for a while too, to just have a little deeper local connection because, you know, I started in West Seattle, primarily selling on the internet. Um, I started, uh, you know, getting like Thunder Road guitars in Seattle has, has my pedals or they did. I, they probably are out yeah. now, but um, I need to take Frank some more pedals. Um, sorry, Frank, if you ever <laughs> listen, um, <laughs> I, I promise more are coming. Um, and now I'm, I'm selling them here at Champlin guitars in Bellingham and, um, they're a great little shop and they just like, they have all these people who come in just looking for local stuff. So I love that, but it, but you know, beyond those things, like, I just don't like people don't know I'm yeah. here, you know? And so I was like, you know, this collaboration is a great way to, to kind of build that connection and just, and get out there and, and talk to people in the community and, you know, see what they're doing and what they want and, you know, what kind of pedals they're into. So i um, pretty excited about that. And then the other one is another collaboration um, with an individual uh, and probably won't say who yet, um, but uh, it's gonna, it's probably, it started out as something else and it looks like it's going to be a bass drive oh, okay. at this point. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that just because I haven't built a bass specific pedal yet, although uh, the Blister and Peel is a rad bass pedal. Like it plays really well with bass. And I've heard from a few people too who are like, love the Shuxon on bass. Um, 
I, the litigator, I think, is a little bit too. It it has a little too much yeah. high end. For, Maybe carves out a little know, too for, much of the low end to make it really. It takes a chunk out right up yeah. front. Just you know the way it's designed. Um, could probably change that really easily, but why not just build something else? So um, so I'm working on another uh, a base drive, and it's gonna. It's going to be cool because I'm going to have, it's going to be kind of fuzz factory asking that I'm going to just put a bunch of controls in for the first design. So just like, I'm going to do a, a, a you know, a power, you know, biasing control. Um, I'm going to do, you know, obviously have like a tone control and then probably just put a control on each game mm-hmm. stage and just like see how I yeah. like it. But I, but I've just, I like that idea, you know, of just like here, Go ahead, twist all the knobs, change everything about yeah. the circuit. Um, so that so that will probably, hopefully, I'll you know be able to turn that around by summer. I, I have a I pretty much have the circuit laid out, um, so I just kind of gotta gotta test that and see where that goes, and then hopefully I can announce that and have a couple pedals releasing, you know, within a within a month or two. So I have to ask only because I talked to Joe Branton over at the Guitar Nerds enough. And he, uh, you know, he's a bassist uh, by trade. That's his main instrument. And he's constantly talking about how he loves guitar pedals on bass. But the thing he always looks for is a clean blend. Because if it if it distorts mm. too much and takes too much of the fundamental bass tone out, it gets wonky and hard to deal with. Have you thought about adding a clean blend to that at all? I have thought about that, actually. That was... That was one of the ideas uh, kicking around too, because I was like, "Well, if I'm going to have, you know, all these other controls, why not kick a clean blend yeah. in there?" So that's definitely that's in the ideas, and we'll see how it goes, and see, um, you know, see if I dig it. I borrowed a P bass from a buddy because I, I don't know where I had a bass, and it's been missing for years. So <laughs> maybe the drummer took it um, <laughs> when he ghosted. It actually, it it might have been another oh, drummer no. who took it. So. <laughs> Oh, well, well, Dan, it's been a lot of fun talking about and getting to know you and your pedals because because they, they're kind of new to me. And I, man, I love I love what you're doing. I love the the very wanting to build the local community that you're talking about, because that's so cool. It's to me, that's what what's so important. Like, it's great to have or great to be, I guess, as a pedal builder, become, you know, these these big brands like a boss or a Wampler or a JHS. But what I'm seeing more and more are um, sm- small companies. It, I, f- I feel weird saying companies when it's a person. You know what I mean? But small companies, people yeah. who want to build. Yeah, it is just yeah, me. Yeah, People who want to build that community around what they're doing, you know, what you're doing there in Washington. Um, uh, or like what uh, someone like Mark Turley, who's a, another sponsor of the podcast, doing with like Summer School Electronics up in Syracuse, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, or like, I mean, I know they're a big brand now, but like what Earthquaker has done around the Akron, Ohio area and brought, you know, built this community yeah. of builders there. Um, I, I think that's been the most beautiful part of all the gear because, um, listeners have heard me talk about how I, I, I can't keep up with all the pedals that are out there anymore. My brain just can't hold all of them. And sometimes it's even hard to be fully interested in them, but I love the people in the community doing that it, they bring together way more than I like the pedals themselves. And so I love hearing talk of that kind of local community building. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, I think it's just such a, it's such a good opportunity to, to do that and just connect different people. And, and then, you know, because I'm connected to builders from all over the place, like I can bring some of that into, you know, into my local community too, and be like, Hey, check this thing out, you know, and then you just kind of, you shorten those distances, you yeah. know, and, and, um, just, yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be doing it at whatever level it, it happens to be this particular yeah. week. And just keep <laughs> making the world smaller is the way I feel about it. It just keeps making the world smaller. Yeah. Definitely. Well, awesome. Well, we're going to go over to the Patreon episode and we're going to talk a little more. I'm going to, I'm going to pick your uh, brain a little bit more as a player than a, a pedal builder. And, um, ask you the the i have a theme around all the patreon episodes this year listeners if you want to come hang out with this over at the patreon episode you can do so very easily and relatively cheaply by going over to patreon.com slash 40 watt podcast where for five dollars a month you can get 
the main episode ad free, except for me talking about Barry at the beginning, because you should all know about that. Um, and uh, you get the bonus episode that comes out every week that there's a new episode. So in the meantime, Dan, where can everybody find you online? Spunloud.com. Uh, Instagram is just at Spunloud. Uh, I also have a Facebook, but I'm I'm more active on Instagram and uh, and the website. And you can just email Dan at Spunloud.com anytime and ask questions, whatever. Um, if something's not up on the website, hit me up. Uh, or you want something special, let me know, and maybe I'll build it for awesome. you. Awesome. Well, listeners, all of those uh, links are down in the description of the show notes below. So if you didn't remember that or you're driving and you should not be writing things down, because you definitely should not be writing things down, you can come back. You can just go to the show notes and grab those links there and check out Dan and Spun Loud uh, and all the cool stuff that's coming up and get ready for it. In the meantime, we're going over to Patreon. Thank you all so much for listening. For Dan and for myself, be good to yourselves. Be kind to each other and make some noise.